is a presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are St. Louis. This is St. Louis Cardinals baseball, and it's a beautiful night here in the Queen City. The Great American Ballpark, game number three, the St. Louis Cardinals and the Cincinnati Reds. The Cardinals bullpen in this series, one of the stories they have dominated when you look at what the Reds have done. The Reds historically bad this year. They've given up 14 hits, their pin in the first two games. The Cardinals just four in their innings of work. And it was two more from Tyler Lyons as he finished off the game for the Cardinals. Matt Bowman picked up his first ever Major League win. And with Jim the Cat Hayes, Al Roboski, I'm Dan McLaughlin. Welcome to St. Louis Cardinals baseball. And this bullpen from day one of spring training has been a strength of the Cardinals. Well, the Cardinal bullpen has been a strength. And, of course, it's a nightmare for the Reds. I think it also bodes well because the Cardinals have that ability from the seventh inning on. They just are tearing it up scoring more runs than any team in all of baseball. Well we saw four home runs hit by the Cardinals last night two off the bat of Brandon Moss. He's in the lineup tonight and it's our Budweiser what's on tap. Adam Wainwright gets the call for St. Louis. Brandon Finnegan the lefty for the Cincinnati Reds. Reds Cardinals a battle in the central. It comes your way next.
all-new Fox Sports app. Highlights, interviews, injury updates, scores, and instant alerts on your favorite teams and rivals. Download it now from the App Store, Google Play, or visit foxsports.com slash app. It's time now for our Quicken Loans Rocket Arms. Here's a look at the most complete games. This is active in the National League. Clayton Kershaw, 24. Wayne Wright, just three back of him. Then two Giants, a former Red, Matt Cain and Johnny Cueto. Speaking of Adam Wainwright, he's set to go. Looking to pick up win number six here tonight. The Cards, the Reds, it comes your way next. Louis Cardinals baseball is brought to you by Bud Light Live, by Chevrolet. Visit your local Mid-America Chevy dealer for great prices on the all-new 2016 Malibu. And by Menards, save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. The Hall of Famer back-to-back -back MVP, the statue of Joe Morgan just outside the Great American Ballpark and inside it's the rubber game between the Reds and the Cardinals. Along with Jim Hayes and Al Roboski, I'm Dan McLaughlin. 80 degrees here from the Great American Ballpark in Cincinnati. And in my mind, this is a very important game for the Cardinals. One, you have to beat clubs that are rebuilding, and that's what Cincinnati says they are. And also, you have to win this game, get a little momentum going in for a second place uh, showdown with the Pirates over the weekend. And the first pitch to Carpenter. Rarely does he go after that first pitch. He is hit out of play for strike one. Brandon Finnegan is a 23 year old, and this is the lineup that he'll face Matt Carpenter, Aledmus Diaz, followed by Holiday, Piscotti, Yadier Molina, Brandon Moss, two home runs last night, Jed Jerko, Randall Gritchick, and the pitcher, Adam Wainwright. This is a battle of TCU. Both of them went there. Of course, Finnegan, remember, he was in the College World Series. And then later that year was drafted by Kansas City, 17th overall, and the first player ever to pitch in the same year the College World Series and the World Series of Baseball. Here is an 0-2 pitch. Outfield straight away. The next to Carpenter. The check swing and... He did not go. He was originally drafted by Texas in the 45th round in 2011. Did not sign. As Al mentioned, went to TCU. 
then drafted by Kansas City first round 17th overall back in 2014 first to make it to the big leagues in that draft class as well. Remember he came up with from the minor leagues and he put him in the bullpen he did very well but he did not like that and almost kind of uh, revolted they wanted to be a reliever he wanted to be a starter and so he was included in the Johnny Cueto deal. Reed Lamb and, and Finnegan three left handers and they say Reed is their second best minor league pitching prospect. The 2 2 is lifted in the air to left center field. Holt is over with the glasses on and the sun is shining brightly. Tough sun field for the left fielder and center fielder. Early starts of these games. It's Duvall and left. Tyler Holt is in center. Jay Bruce in right. Suarez, Cozart, Phillips, and Vado along the infield, and Ramon Cabrera is behind the plate. Brian Price and the Cincinnati Reds are 22 and 37. And already 19 and a half games back of the Chicago Cubs. Here's a lead miss Diaz and he pulls it foul. You know, the Reds got a pretty you know, potent offense. They're going to score some runs particularly against mediocre pitching. But the whole question is can they out slug the opposition because a lot of their starters are inexperienced and then that bullpen is incinerated. Diaz hitting 318, seventh best currently in the National League. And a foul ball. Leading the league is Daniel Murphy. He's been doing that basically since day one, the yeah. second baseman of the Nationals. He's hitting 376. Interesting lineup tonight for Mike Matheny. Of course, everybody's been hitting. You got to find positions for him, but only Diaz and Piscotti have an average over 250 against left handed pitching. 68 for Diaz, 420 for Piscotti. And Diaz fouls it back. Stays nothing at two. Big day around Major League Baseball. It is the draft. And up on the clock right now, the Cincinnati Reds drafting number two overall. The 0 2. And Diaz taps it foul to Chris Maloney. For fans that don't know by now, Cardinals will not have the services of Jose Oquendo for the remainder of this season. Knee replacement surgery, and hopefully we'll see him back in uniform next year. Chris Maloney, a longtime manager in the minor leagues, you get plenty of experience coaching third base. Billy Miller over at first. Had a conversation with Billy in the uh, team hotel the other day, and I said, "You realize you were almost a teammate of Alex Rodriguez." He had no idea that a trade had been made to send a Rod from Texas to Boston with a deal that was signed by Alex Rodriguez. It was signed, and Bill Miller would have been a fixture in that lineup with a Rod and the Players Association. A Rod was going to give up some money. For his likeness, and the Players Association did not agree to do that. Remember, he had signed the 10 year, $252 million contract, and so became a void deal. Aaron Boone hurt his knee, third baseman of the Yankees at the time, playing basketball, and so the Yankees got back into the race to get A Rod, and that's how they picked him up. I've always wondered, you know, the owner of the Texas Rangers paid $250 million to buy that ball club. Tom and Hicks. Tom Hicks. Then he pays uh, $252 million to get one player, A Rod. You're going to tell me $250 was not enough? You had to get two more? <laughs> and the reason that they went to $252, there was a player in one of the sports, I can't remember which one it was, but had a deal for $126 million. So they wanted to double that to make it $252. Eight pitches so far, and this had bat for Aledmus Diaz. And he struck him out. Diaz strikes out for the 28th time this year. 
Number one pick for the Philadelphia Phillies. Mickey Moniak in outfielder, high school. They say the draft this year, not an overly talented draft, but it seems like we hear that year after year, but always first round picks wind, wind up in the big leagues. I find that really interesting looking at that player and he looks pretty small. You kind of wonder if he's ever going to really develop into a premier athlete. But should be no excuse now that people sign uh, draft people for signability. There's too much money being distributed to and revenue sharing with the clubs that they all should have enough money to sign their number ones. And on down. Cardinals will have three in the first 34 picks. If extended even further, the Cardinals have number 23, number 33, and 34, and number 70. So, very big draft for the Cardinals tonight. After the nine pitch at bat by Diaz, it's Holiday, and it's two balls in one strike. Then again, has changed a little bit from a year ago. And the reason he's he's in the rotation here is because he wants to be the, in the rotation, doesn't want to be a reliever, so the Reds were there, are able to accommodate him. And a lot of people thought he'd just be a reliever because he was a two-pitch pitcher. But he's really improved in his changeup. There's a look at it. Fastball slider changeup, Hyundai pitch arsenal. Fastball around 92. A hard breaking ball, the slider, and then a much improved changeup to keep you off balance. Of MLB Pipeline's top 13 draft prospects, you'll find four outfielders. You'll also find six high school pitchers. And they say the two biggest strengths are outfielders and high school pitching. And the Cardinals kind of went away from their normal draft a year ago because they went for a lot of high school people. But it had always been college pitching and you can't argue with the success the Cardinals have had and the reason why if you go back to 2000 interesting number here 43 percent of high school arms selected in the top 10 since 2000 have ever thrown a major league pitch think about that late with a swing and a strikeout of holiday two in the inning for Brandon Finnegan Adam Wainwright to the mound for St. Louis when we come back. First, it'll be Zach Cozart, Joey Votto, and Brandon Phillips for Cincinnati, followed by Jay Bruce, Adam Duvall, uh, Eugenio Suarez, Tyler Holt, Ramon Cabrera, switch hitter, and Brandon Finnegan, the pitcher batting ninth. Adam Wainwright, the 34 year old, making his team leading 13th start tonight. Coming off a tough loss last time out, he pitched extremely well. 
arguably his best or second best outing seven innings against San Francisco and only allowed two. He's really been pitching much better. Let's see if that continues. First pitch is a strike to Zach Cozart. That's the one thing that Adam this year about 10 percent more of first pitch strikes and clubs been swinging at it and have success. To the tune of 22 for 44 right. against those first pitches. So when they 500 average. Yeah, swing, they put it in play, and that's 94th out of 97 qualified starters. Cozart off to a good start. Leads their team in hits, doubles, and average. Good breaking ball. And Molina tags him out. First strikeout for Adam Wainwright. I was talking to the Reds pitching coach Mark Riggins. Remember, he was at the big leagues one time, one time with uh, Joe Torre's staff, uh, staff. But we were talking about Adam Wainwright. He was the pitching corner day during the minor leagues when Adam came over in the Atlanta deal. And we knew he was going to be good, but no one could envision he was going to be this good. A much better breaking ball. Pitch taken up and in by Joey Votto. At the walk off homer in game one off of Kevin Segrist had been 0 for 10 against the Cardinals lefty. And what's been a bit surprising the strikeout 65 this year for Votto fifth most in the National League. And to me just a 230 average. Which in the last two weeks he's picked it up from about 205. But MVP in the National League in 2010. The 2 0 pitch finished second in the rookie of the year. Talked about it last night. He is from Toronto, Canada. And he started, like many Canadian boys, playing the game of hockey. Didn't work out for him. And then started to just swing the bat constantly in high school. So he takes the walk, his 35th this year. The Cardinals defense with Holiday in left, Grichik in center, Piscotti is in right. Jerko, Diaz, Carpenter, Moss along the infield. Yadier Molina is behind the plate. That's brought to you by Dobbs Tire and Auto Centers. This is career start 197 between Adam Wainwright and Yadier Molina, which now ties them with Bob Gibson and Tim McCarver. This battery for the most starts in franchise history. So very much a significant start tonight for those two. Third on that list is Bob Forge and Ted Simmons, 174. Forge ended up with the third most wins in Cardinal history. Bob Gibson, Jess Haynes, and then Bob Forge. Get to know each other. They put down signs in their sleep, don't they? They do. So comfortable with each other, the confidence in the catcher. That's ripped the other way and trouble into the corner off the bat of Phillips. Piscotti a little trouble digging it out of the corner, but Votto stops at third. Take a look at the pitch, Missouri Lottery Fox tracks. You see the glove from Yachty goes up and over the middle of the plate, not the location they wanted. Phillips has hit over 300 against Adam Wainwright, and a great scoring opportunity right here for the Reds. Jay Bruce also good numbers against Wainwright, 308 average, couple of home runs. He's hit safely in 10 of his last 11 starts. And a good breaking ball for strike one. Bruce also leads their club in RBI, sixth best in the National League with 41. And 362 is average with runners in scoring position. So some trouble to pitch out of here for Adam Wainwright.
Cardinals will concede a run. They have the shift on and they got to play back. This is where Wainwright would love to get the pop up or once he gets two strikes, the strikeout. Here's a 1 1 pitch to Bruce. As you mentioned now this is a Reds team they, they've got some bats and they've got offense here lately last 11 games the team has hit 323 and they're averaging nearly eight runs a game during this stretch of 11 games and it's an unfair ballpark to the pitchers you can make good pitches and not be rewarded the 2 1 pitch coming in on it it'll be Carpenter gloves Makes the play, runs scores, one to nothing, Cincinnati. Take a look at the Hyundai pitch arsenal for Adam Wainwright coming into play tonight. As he calls time with a runner at third base, and the hitter will be Duvall. Same old, same old fastball, cutter, curve, and change. A little, a little surprising that he throws the cutter more than that vintage curveball. You talked to Mark Riggins about the cutter. Yeah, yeah I talked to. Mark Riggins and it's his belief he does not allow his young pitchers to throw the cutter. He thinks it diminishes their velocity. It's kind of a sucker pitch. Too many times you give up home runs on it. It flattens out and just kind of stays there. Now he'll say when you get into your 30s you know you're trying to do anything you can to trick people. So then, you know, like Simon last night, he goes, he, he throws cutters, but none of our young kids. 1 0 pitch inside. And if you think about it, it was Chris Carpenter when he came to the Cardinals, and he was an older guy and coming back off the of surgeries and stuff, and great pitcher, but he's the one that had such great success with his cutter that the younger pitchers started throwing that pitch for the Redbirds. 2 0 on Duvall. And he picks up a base hit into left. 2 0 Cincinnati. A two out hit. His 40th RBI to score Phillips. 2 0 Cincinnati here in the bottom of the first. Duvall's kind of living in a tree right now with the 17 home runs. That was his 40th RBI way off the plate. And that ball had a real hump in it. And just kind of got underneath it a little bit, flattens out. You know, it doesn't have that that good snap to it. Here's Suarez, who's at third base. And last year, after the injury to Zach Cozart, really a scary knee injury, it was Suarez that was at short. They thought that they potentially would split time at shortstop, but he is now at third. Cozart every day at short. Good curveball. 0 and 2. He was picked up from Detroit, and he played a lot of shortstop there after the injury to Iglesias two years ago. They got him from in the Simon deal, and then from Detroit, and then Simon got released this spring. Comes back to the Reds. That base hit that Duvall got was on the cutter. And, you know, that's that kind of you get underneath it and it just kind of spins a little bit, flattens out, very hittable. No balls and two strikes on Suarez. Runner goes. Yachty, tough pitch to throw on, but so what? It's Yadier Molina as he guns down Duvall trying to pick up his second stolen base of the year. A breaking ball that he had to backhand. And what a throw here by Yadier Molina. He catches Adam Duvall. He'll take a look at it. He looks to be out. Ball beating. I think the tag was late and the leg reached, but it looks like they're not going to appeal it. Cue the music again. <laughs> Go to break. There it is. Officially the first inning in the books.
as we move to the top of the second here from the Great American Ballpark in Cincinnati. Well, we're going to talk about the first pitch importance. We talked about Wainwright. He is over 64 uh, percent average is 60 percent for first pitch strikes and hitters are hitting 500 against him with a 1250 OPS. Finnegan is one of the worst in baseball throwing first pitch strikes. And they're right on cue. He throws less than 52 percent first pitch strikes. Matter of fact he has trouble throwing retiring the first batter of an inning. Ninth worst in all of baseball. And that's your Toyota keys to the game. Now the one thing Finnegan does do is he's been outstanding when those guys reach scoring position and really cuts them down there and doesn't allow them to score. 211 against him with runners in scoring position as Piscotti swings through that pitch. Steven has been outstanding against lefties this year. Coming into play tonight, 63 plate appearances against left handed pitching. His on base percentage is 540. League average in on base percentage is right around 300. And the 1 2 pitch. Fastball taken high at 93. Now he hits 420 against left handed pitching and talk with John Mabry about an evolving young hitter but boy is he way advanced for his young age. The 2 2. Talked about it last night remember last night he had a tough start to it a couple strikeouts first two times up 0 for 4 and then he got a nasty slider late in the game and went down and got it sent it to right field and got an RBI came up another time and you know you thought he was going to get a base hit too so kind of salvages those nights when they're not going well. Three balls two strikes on Piscotti. Finnegan against the Cardinals beat St. Louis earlier this year despite giving up four runs in five innings. That was a game matched up against Adam Wainwright last year faced the Cardinals three times allowed six runs in seven and a third. Very simple delivery and the three two is swung on and missed three strikeouts in a row for the Cincinnati left hander. It's 511 200 pounds but you see the big motion and throw the ball by people up in the zone. They said earlier this year he, he was matched up against Kershaw one of the best games they had seen in many years a one nothing game and he was equaling Kershaw pitch for pitch. That was back on May 23rd. He was the first Reds lefty since Lance Davis to throw a complete game. Davis beat the Tigers and it had been since 2001. Finnegan eight innings. The problem was matched up with Clayton Kershaw at Dodger Stadium who went nine. Kershaw by the way. A 1.46 ERA to lead the National League and already an eight game winner. There's another comparison you make between those two lefties. Finnegan has 34 walks, but Kershaw has six and over 100 strikeouts. And Molina shoots it out to deep right field. This ball will carry off the wall. Thinking two. Bruce a great arm throw is high. And Molina is in there safely. Can't take anything for granted. And Yachty knew about that throwing arm from Bruce. Played the carom perfectly. And then he just. Launch this ball back to the infield a little bit high, or they might have had him at second. See how hard Yardy's running. First base hit for the Cardinals, first man in scoring position. Here's Moss, who got the call today over Matt Adams in the starting lineup. He's two for five with a home run. 
against this lefty. What else? Last night was his eighth multi home run game of his career, and he's homered in five of his last seven. I mean, you know, Mike Matheny has these different options and hunches and numbers to dictate. It's it the other way. Long way to go for Duvall near the line and a foul ball. The one thing though you could counter if you're in that Matt Adams group that says well he should be playing every day if you're playing Moss for home runs you get it. However all 13 of his home runs have been hit against right handed pitching. Well he's also a 167 batter against left handed pitching. Adams 385 right but you know sometimes you play the hunch sometimes you play the odds sometimes you just get lucky Moss base hit in the center here comes Molina no throw by Tyler Holt and Brandon Moss gets the Cardinals on the board and it's a 2 1 Cincinnati lead Moss good approach there you know shortened up did try to do too much with an outside pitch just lobbed it over the infield and the Cardinals are right back in this ball game. So sometimes you look at the numbers they don't dictate any reason to have a guy play but all of a sudden they'll come through instead of swinging for the fences he's just trying to make contact and it paid off. 30th run driven in by Brandon Moss and it brings in Jed Jerko. It's the start tonight at third. And a fastball taken in the dirt. Jerko hitting 255 with six home runs. And he's driven in 16. 192 against left handed pitching. But you're going to have to spell Peralta has come off the disabled list. He was a difference maker the first two games, but you're going to have to give him some rest. And the 1 0 is fouled back. And Jerko in his career has shown that he hits left handers better than right handed pitching. Finn again and they're trying to find anybody that can be effective in this rotation is one of 10 starters used already by the Reds this year. Early June 10 different starters. Check swing and he went one ball and two strikes. Now the Cardinals have only used five starters all year and they haven't been effective all season long or the Reds have used ten because they got five starters on the DL. And the one two pitch to Jed Jerko instead a check on Moss at first no stolen bases this year for Moss. Cardinals coming into play tonight have won three of their last four. They've scored 37 runs in those four games. Two balls, two strikes. Scoots away. Moss now into scoring position. And because of the Cardinals' ability to score runs, and in particular from the seventh inning on, you, know, you never feel like you're out of a ball game. You know, you're always in it and you get these young pitchers they're not going to go real deep into a game you know you're going into the Reds bullpen prior to the Cardinals coming in town they had settled down a little bit but they're back to where they were the first six weeks of the season and that's horrible outfield is straight away base hit could tie it and the 2 2 inside Randall Gritchick is on deck. This is the eighth different opportunity the Cardinals have had this season to go to four games above 500. They've had eight chances to do it. They've come up short in all eight. And a fly ball that's lifted out to right. Bruce is back and makes the catch. Advancing, it's Moss from second to third, and it brings in Randall Gritchick. Well, you may remember last year Molina hurting himself on a slide and then 
ultimately on a play at the plate on a throw by Jason Hayward. Get a little worried anytime he's sliding around the bag. Seems to be all right. Got those gloves on, and you wonder if there's a little protection inside of them. Here's Randall Gritchick. Now you may notice with Gritchick, he's not laying the bat nearly as parallel to the ground that he was at the beginning of the season. It's more upright. What they're trying to do is get that top hand through. He's laying down too much, almost like a swinging gate. And he was having trouble, as we've seen this year, with the breaking ball. And so he couldn't make that adjustment. So by adjusting his hands, and John Mabry's been doing this the last three to four weeks, they feel that it's a better opportunity for Gritchick to get to that breaking ball. And you, and you know, it's just so minute where dropping it down at one time helped him out, but to where he is right now, you kind of have to go in between. One ball, two strikes. Now that he has two strikes on him, you will doubtful you would see any kind of a fastball in the strike zone. You expect to see the hard slider or the changeup with something off the plate. They're going to come in. The one two. Spoiled by Gritchick. See that pitch right there is a good example with the way that he was swinging the bat. He's so tied up. Because of his hands, inside pitches, and then that slider on the middle outer half, he just could not get to. You know, he's he's got enough bat speed that he doesn't have to worry about that pitch inside. But hitters get so paranoid, they don't want to be jammed where the real good hitters trust that their hands will come through. Two balls, two strikes. Shocked. We've seen two straight fastballs. Very much so. Make a mistake. The 2 2. And that's hit out of play. Fitting in already with 46 pitches. It's kind of a, another reason why they kind of look at him as a, a reliever and maxed out type guy and never real efficient with that uh, pitch count two balls two strikes on Randall Gritchick fights it off hits it to third Suarez throw up the line and the tag is there by Votto Suarez will lead it off when we come back as Brandon Moss has gotten the Cardinals on the board with RBI number 30. MLB All-Star Game ballot is here. All you have to do is head to Cardinals.com, choose your 
All-Star Game worthy stars and then send them to the MLB All-Star Game presented by MasterCard on July 12th. And this year, Midsummer Classic will be held in San Diego at Petco Park. But Ms. Diaz would have to be a write-in candidate. He is not on your ballot. Two to one our score is Suarez leads it off followed by Tyler Holt and Ramon Cabrera. Suarez fell behind nothing and two against Adam Wainwright back in the bottom of the first and then caught stealing was Duvall to end the inning. And the 0 1 pitch. 0 and 2. I was just thinking about the All Star game, Danny, where the Cardinals usually so well represented. And you think this year, you know, there's really Yadier Molina is always going to be right there, but it may be hard pressed to get another card. How about Sung Wan O? Oh. They're, you know, worthy. And now you are giving more and more recognition to setup men. So, I, yeah, I wasn't thinking about him, but you're absolutely right. I was thinking about this the other day. The only guy that may be there is Yadier Molina. And, you know, and then a player's pick or manager's pick, you know, guy like O or, or Diaz. I think Matt Carpenter with his late push is in the conversation at least. I think he always is, you know, and, and not to diminish his ability or anything, but it's also when you're not in first or second place, hurts you also. The 2 2 curveball lifted into center field. Going back with room, Randall Gritchick makes the catch, and there's one away. Brings in Tyler Holt, who gets the start here in game number three. And you may be questioning why Holt and not Billy Hamilton. Well, Billy Hamilton against Adam Wainwright is 0 for 7 with seven strikeouts against the Cardinals righty. And Holt is 8 for his last 16. He came off the bench last night. Got a pinch hit single, so he gets the call here in game three. You look at Holt's uh, last three starts. He's had at least two hits in each of them. So, you know, Price is trying to play their hot hand too. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Popped up to the right side. Moss will give it a look, and it's out of play. On deck, it's Ramon Cabrera. We have a fun story and some video to show you when he comes up. Al mentioned. The other night we talked about how Ramon's father was a longtime professional baseball player. Between the two there's 18 years of difference. Alex the former major leaguer and then played over in Japan big home run hitter. And Ramon Cabrera. And there's your strikeout Molina will throw to first. Strikeout number two. So it was in winter ball a few years ago, Venezuela. And this is his father with his son catching. Now look what he does. He takes off the jersey and everybody, including his son, trying to figure out why. He later had to go to his son Ramon and he said, do you remember a conversation we had about four or five years ago? And he said, I don't know what you're talking about. He said, if I ever am in a game with you, and I hit a home run I will retire on the spot. And that's exactly what he did. Yeah, and, and it was misinterpreted by a lot of people and they thought he was being disrespectful to the game and he had to explain that situation to him before they fully understood. Popped up and Wainwright calls for it. One of the rare times that a pitcher puts it away. How do you want to pitch your dad? He said I don't know. <laughs> Let's get him out. He hit one out then he retired.
is brought to you by Ford, the official cars and trucks of the St. Louis Cardinals. Back in Cincinnati, and this is where William Howard Taft, first ever president, threw out a ceremonial first pitch back in 1910. One of five Cincinnati natives to serve in office. A lot of baseball history here. Al has got the inning off. We'll get caught up with the news of the day with Jim Hayes. I'm Dan McLaughlin. We're at the Great American Ballpark in Cincinnati. 77 degrees. A beautiful night. It'll be Wainwright, Carpenter, and Diaz for the Cardinals here in inning number three. Wainwright is 5 for 20 this year. Three doubles, a triple, a home run, and he is driven in eight. One of the top hitting pitchers in the game today. Unfortunately, Jim, pitching for Jaime Garcia came up short. He went four and two thirds last night, gave up 13 hits. Matt Bowman picked up his first ever major league win, and here we are 24 hours later. What's the news with Jaime? Well, there's no news except that uh, Jaime's trying to evaluate what exactly went wrong. You watched it, uh, Dan, happen live. Balls were up. You know, Jaime's used to getting a lot of ground balls and got uh, a lot of pitches up and he had no explanation for it and uh, just saying that uh, he's glad that his team came back and won the game but he's going to have to figure it out and Mike Matheny was asked today if he looked at any video and possibly got some information as to maybe what Jaime was doing wrong and Mike said nope. How was he last night in his post game in terms of Jaime Garcia addressing you know some of the issues some of the questions after a tough start. You could tell he was uh, rather upset with the way things went, and uh, let's just say he was uh, short. Then. Short, huh? A little short. Brings in Carpenter. He is fourth in runs, second in doubles, second in triples, and sixth in walks. Coming into play tonight, takes a ball as he fly to left center to start this ball game. One thing we know about the Cardinals, day in and day out, Matt Carpenter is at the top of the lineup. One thing we also know is that after Matt Carpenter, a lot of different lineup combinations and decisions for Mike Matheny. Yeah, Mike was talking about that today. You were talking about not having Adams in there and having Moss in there. And I asked Mike, you know, especially with the addition of Johnny Peralta, how difficult it is. And he said it's it's a good problem to have, but it is a good problem. He said, like a guy like Jed Jerko needs to get some at bat. So he's in there today. He said Moss was great last night. Adams has been on a tear, but he said the fact that uh, Moss had seen the starting pitcher a couple of times had a homer against him he opted there he said it, you know sometimes it, there's a shade of a difference and all he's trying to do is juggle the different lineups and make sure he's keeping guys live and he said it's not always an easy decision but again a good problem to have Carpenter lifts a fly ball out to left and there is Duvall for out number two well byproduct of Carpenter shifting to second base has been the unfortunate start of Colt Wong, and uh, he's sent down to Triple A. Yeah, and he'll uh, be in the starting lineup for Memphis tonight. And Mike Matheny was asked about uh, the whole Wong situation and how difficult the decision that is for the ball club. And you know, Mike said everyone liked Colton, but he said this was a rare case where they felt like they could do what's best for Colton because they felt like Colton really needs at bats, especially the way. You know, with Johnny Peralta back and what they wanted to do with the rest of the infield, that he was going to get squeezed for time. And it was the best thing for the organization because they have a lot invested in Colton Wong and they want to see him get right because they believe he will be a big contributor to this ball club. You know, and there's other guys, he said, you know, Jed Jerko had the same thing, had signed a, a deal in San Diego, then had to go down. He said, sometimes it happens in, in Major League Baseball. And he said, you know, it can be a cautionary tale for guys that figure once you get that, uh, then you're all set but he said that wasn't the, the case with Colton at all Diaz a fly ball to center and it's handled by Tyler Holt so one two three go the Cardinals here at the top of the third.
on the run when the Cardinals score six. Any size drink, just 50 cents the next day. That's coffee, fountain, frozen drinks. When they score, you pour at your nearest on the run. You earned it. Brian Price and the Cincinnati Reds with a 2-1 lead here in the home half of the third. Dogs in the park day. Barks in the park. We'll have our own at Bush Stadium coming up in a couple of weeks as Brandon Finnegan leads it off. He is 5 for 25 this year. Jim, I want to go back to Brandon Moss, who is at first base, and he understands the scrutiny that Mike Matheny is under in terms of trying to figure out the right combination for this lineup. Yeah, and he also said, when people talk about competition is good for a ball club, he said, I don't buy that because if you're competing against a teammate, you're not rooting for a teammate. And he said, in the case with Adams and him vying for first base, and I've seen this for playing time at first base, they're always talking. And it seems Moss is always helping Adams, especially when Adams got off to the slow start. Moss said, Adams should be our everyday first baseman because he's a more complete hitter. He can hit lefties, he can go the other way, and he's got power. And he said, I'm used to being a part time player, so I'll get my at bat. So there's no competition among us. And as for the the two home runs that uh, Moss hit last night the one at 426 I said Do you think it went a little further and he said I just know it went over the <laughs> wall that that's all I care about but he said you know he's got he's got what five homers in his last seven games and he said that's his job he said and we, even though we saw him go the other way and, and, and get a single he said I'm not going to do the ball club any good unless I'm producing power numbers so that's what he tries to do from 3 and 0 to a strikeout. You see Matt Adams there and this is such an exciting day around Major League Baseball. You and I were uh, in a cab with Kevin Segrist today and Matt Adams was in the cab as well. We were talking about draft day and what it means to guys. For instance Adams was drafted initially many forget as a catcher right when he signed he went to Johnson City then moved to first base. I said were you happy he said oh yeah he said I don't want any part of catching. But you always get these interesting stories about how and when a player is drafted. That's Matt Adams. And I think maybe the greatest story that the Cardinals have on the current roster is Kevin Segrist, who was picked number 1,235 overall. There's a fly ball that's lifted out to center for the second out. Yeah, I was looking for, uh, you know, some, some stories like Waka had a great one. You know, he knew he was going in the first round. 2012 the, the Cardinals take him and I said Segris what do you remember I know it was the 41st round what do you remember about that and he goes nothing he goes a couple teams including the Cardinals had contacted me I really had no idea I was going to be drafted so he found out when the Cardinals called him and he told them I was kind of planning on going back to school at Palm Beach Community College and he never saw himself as a major leaguer until Dennis Martinez got with him in in single a ball and he said he taught him how to change his mechanics so he could be a power pitcher. Here's a ground ball that's hit to the right side and taken there by Matt Carpenter who is a 13th round pick. Amazing some of the stories of guys that have gotten here to the big leagues and that includes our very own Jim Hayes. Nicely done.
Finals a 2-1 Cincinnati lead. Beautiful night for baseball. Temperatures have been very pleasant. We understand it's going to get hot in this area over the weekend. Low to mid 90s, but for these three nights, it's been perfect. It's going to be pushing triple digits this weekend in St. Louis. It's Holiday, Piscotti, and Molina. We're talking about the draft. The Cardinals and the Reds, they are just uh, two of eight teams that have never picked first overall. As a matter of fact, the Cardinals, only team that hasn't drafted in the top 10 in the past 10 years. And that's in the National League. In the corner, it carries. Oh, and the catch is made by Duvall. And speaking of number one overall picks, Arkea in the driver's seat. Some big names on this list, I'm sure. Mike Moore has the most wins of number one overall picks. Andy Bennis was selected by San Diego. Tim Belcher, Floyd Bannister, David Price still pitching, obviously. Mike Moore was part of those great A's teams for Tony La Russa back in the late 80s and early 90s. There's a ground ball sharply hit to third. Two down. Dan, you should have success, you know, with your early rounds and getting guys to the major leagues. Not all teams can say that, but you should. But I mean, I think one of the most remarkable things is the Cardinals, the success they've had with guys that you know, or into the hundreds. And, you know, Keith Hernandez, I think, was 37th round. Force was like in the 40th round. Even the current guys, you know, they're playing for the Cardinals right now or are guys that were drafted in, in rounds that you couldn't say, okay, this is going to be a bona fide major league player. They've done a tremendous job of drafting them and then developing them. Molina selected 113th overall back in 2000. I think the best recent draft you look at with the Cardinals and I mentioned Carpenter a 13th round pick in 2009 that draft produced seven major league players Carpenter Matt Adams Trevor Rosenthal Shelby Miller Joe Kelly just to name a few yeah. I mean that's a heck of a draft class that's a credit to John Mosaylock and the assistant GM Michael Gersh and John Vooch who's been around the Cardinals forever. Gary LaRock running the minor league system. Matt Slater we talked about him last night finding O and finding Diaz. Moises Rodriguez Mike Jorgensen and Mike of course been around the Cardinals as a player and manager and scout and running the farm system and now it's Randy Flores. I mean you just it has to be the toughest job in all of baseball to try and project a young person. 17 18 years of age or even a college player where they're going to be in three four or five years Finnegan has struck out five so far through three and a half it's two one Cincinnati.
Returning to St. Louis, so don't miss Liverpool FC as they take on AS Roma at Bush Stadium. That's August 1st. Tickets are on sale now. Just head to cardinals.com slash soccer. You'll purchase your tickets August 1st, Liverpool versus Roma, and it can be seen at Bush Stadium. I love the draft. I get into it. I love seeing the projections of these players and you know you, you may catch those diamonds in the rough and some of the guys drafted tonight could be in the big leagues next year. And, and Dan as I say you know you. You just never know if you're taking college players you they've had a little bit of time the attrition rate on injuries or they've learned how to handle themselves away from their mommy and daddy. You know I mean that's a big thing no doubt but. How do you look and see a young man? You, you put a million dollars in his pocket. Does he become uh, complacent and said, "Oh, well, you know, it's really tough to get there. I got my money." And guys lose the drive. There's Brandon Phillips. In many ways, the Reds can thank Johnny Peralta for Brandon Phillips being here with the Cincinnati Reds. Those two were in the Cleveland organization. And this was back in 2004 both coming up both were shortstops and Peralta turned into the International League player of the year in the minor leagues and was in competition with Phillips for shortstop after the departure of one of the greats Omar Vizquel he had moved on Peralta beats out Phillips at shortstop and Phillips was kind of lost in the system. So Wayne Kripsky, who was the GM at the time, traded for Phillips. They moved him to second, and he's become one of the best second basemen over the last decade in the National League. Well, I remember, it's almost like he had a bad reputation and came over here, and, you know, he's been a, a, a terrific ball player, not only with his gold gloves, but he's been a very productive player. He gets it uh, how to be fan friendly. I know Cardinal fans don't like him, but. You know this guy really is a, a great great ambassador for the game. Here's a 2 2 pitch off speed pitch taken in the dirt. Tough start to the season for Adam Wainwright record was at one in three ERA was over seven. And he's two and one ERA at three in his last four starts and those are against good hitting clubs Colorado Chicago Washington San Francisco. And Phillips strikes out. So he drops to a knee. That's strikeout number four for Adam Wainwright. Nick Sinzel out of Tennessee, a third baseman, is the second overall pick for the Cincinnati Reds. And I also think it's always interesting, too, Al, you look at the philosophies of different organizations. Do we go with high school players or college players? A big, big difference between the two. It's and a lot of it is what you just said being away from home. You know, it was funny when. When I was eligible for the draft. And I was drafted out of high school I didn't start pitching till a senior in high school. And I was drafted by Minnesota didn't sign missed an entire draft. Popped up. Jerko foul territory. Reaching into the crowd and can't make the play. I went and played after my first year of junior college. I went and played summer baseball in Wichita. And uh, got picked up by Cessna for the national, uh, the NBC championship in Wichita. And a Cardinal scout, Runt Moore, who signed Bob Gibson, offered me a contract. And I said, I want to sign, but I want to play another year. Junior college and then sign. Well, I was drafted off of his recommendation in the January draft. They don't have it anymore. And I was drafted in the January draft, but I had to deal with the California guys, scouts, and they thought I was too small. Last day, the card they had right to me before the June draft. My college coach said, What do you want to do? And I said, I want to sign with the Cardinals. But they made one offer before the season <laughs> never came back. So he said he'd call up the, the uh, scouting supervisor. Told me later, he said, You'll be at your house at 9 o'clock tonight. I said, Coach, if you got in that far, you come too. And I always said I was I was signed as a as a favorite of my college coach. Two balls and two strikes. Sinzel for the Reds. 
the reigning Cape Cod League MVP hit 352 for Tennessee the volunteers this last year. There's a strikeout of Bruce two in a row. Not bad for a kid who wasn't even on scholarship his freshman year in Knoxville. Take away the first inning and Adam Wainwright has been sensational. He's got that breaking ball going now when he does throw that cutter it's got downward action it's got a it's just that late sharp movement spotting the fastball. Here's Duvall and a breaking ball and a strike. For what it's worth the Reds pick. This is also a factor. Is represented by the one and only Scott Boris. <laughs> Here's the one. And a lot of people say Scott Boris. Who was a Cardinal minor league player. And. Felt like he should have. I don't think he got any higher in double A ball. And of course he thought in his mind he was a major league star. And his revenge on baseball that he never made to the big leagues is he's become public enemy number one but a great agent. I take him. <laughs> he's pretty good. Put it this way. Would he have us. Not a chance. <laughs> but I mean he can he's pretty selective and he only gets the top players. I, I will also say that not every player has it come th through and. You know the contracts he, he negotiated been good for them. But there's no doubt he's uh, instrumental in what the game is today. Wainwright strikes out the side here in inning number four. Good ball game. It's 2 1. To Denver to face the Rockies as a result of an April 28th postponement. Both the teams were scheduled to arrive in the early morning hours. Rockies played a night game in LA. Pirates and Mets went 10 innings in Pittsburgh. So it's a one day trip, and we'll see how they are tomorrow night. As Moss swings through that pitch, nothing at two. It's Waka and Garrett Cole tomorrow. Waka has lost six straight decisions. It'll be his eighth start against the Pirates. And the 0-2. Ground ball hits sharply to first and taken by Votto. Race to the bag and he's there. And speaking of the draft, these two teams represented well. With players currently on the active roster, Giants with 14, Cardinals 11, Cincinnati with 10. 
That's in all of baseball. Tom Browning, by the way, is representing the Cincinnati Reds in New York for the draft. And of course, many remember Tom Browning in his perfect game back in 1988 against the Dodgers. He never went to a three ball count. And we went, and we have uh, Ryan Ludwig. And that is hammered down the left field line. Foul. Ludwig, one of my favorites. Yeah, I mean, you root for a guy like that. Remember, what was he about 27 when he came to St. Louis? And, and there was a great find by John Mozela, you know, that knew about him and had so many injuries. Finally got a chance to put it all together when he was healthy. And he was a not only a good cardinal, but he had a good career for quite a while. Jerko flied out to right his first time up. Jerko was a second round pick and a nice play made by a fan that brought their glove. Nicely done. And that young lady behind him, like, thank you, sir. Thank you. Now he wants a contract. Jerko won the Brooks Wallace Award, best shortstop in the country when he was with West Virginia. 27 year old from Morgantown. And you know, another thing the Cardinals have been outstanding at is they've had a couple first round draft picks that they drafted and then realized they're not quite the player they thought they were. And they got rid of Cox, got Mojica for him. You know, Brett Wallace is in the holiday trade. You know, so and Brett Wallace now has proven to be a established big leaguer. Tough pitch right there to take. Tough pitch to get rung up on. Brings in Randall Gritchick. Grounded out to third with a runner at third back in the second inning. One thing that Finnegan has not done here tonight is walk anybody. And that's been part of his problems. Averaging over four per nine innings. And among starters, that's 102 out of 106 qualified starters in baseball. You could talk about the trade that brought Finnegan and Lamb, we saw in this series, pitch beat the Cardinals, but also their number two pitching prospect, Reed, another left hander for the Cueto. I mean, long term, that's going to be an outstanding trade for the Reds. John Lamb, Cody Reed, Brandon Finnegan for Johnny Cueto. And if you're Kansas City, Cueto had two big starts in which he won in postseason play for a championship. And remember, he was terrible in the regular season with Kansas City. Salvador Perez, a bigger catcher, very good, known as one of the best catchers in the game. They said that he did not get far enough down in his crouch behind the plate, and it really broke the concentration of Cueto. And Cueto also admitted that he later found out he was tipping pitches. That is a line shot caught by Phillips. Eleven in a row for Brandon Finnegan.
Greater coverage of baseball brought to you by T-Mobile. Buster Posey, Yadier Molina. Look at the all-star vote at catcher and a slight lead for Yadier Molina. T-Mobile, greater coverage of baseball. Here's Suarez, Holt, and Ramon Cabrera. Adam Wainwright is old Uncle Charlie working tonight, doesn't he? Tired nine in a row, and all this stuff looks nice and crisp. Already reached his season high for strikeouts. Six through four innings. Struck out the side last inning. And the first pitch to Suarez. Cutter taken for a ball. Adam Wainwright was the 29th overall selection back in 2000. And then it was the trade that changed the course of his career, his life, and the course of the franchise of the Cardinals. J.D. Drew, Eli Marrero for Adam Wainwright, Ray King, and Jason Marquis. If you're wondering, the Cardinals selected Sean Boyd with their pick back in 2000. And we were doing a game, the first ever exhibition game at Bush Stadium before regular season started up. Sean Boyd had the first ever home run in that ballpark. Remember the name, but I don't remember anything about it. That was about as good as it got. <laughs> <laughs> Seven strikeouts for Wainwright. Reminder that Saturday, June 18th, celebrate your furry friend. Take home a Cardinals pet leash holder with a photo frame. Compliments of Nestle Purina. Available to 30,000 pet lovers ages 16 and older. Get your tickets at cardinals.com slash promotions. Whenever you talk about the draft, you got to think of Mike Piazza. 62nd round. Piazza's father was a very close friend of Lasorda's. And came out that it was supposed to be Mike was supposed to be his godson. It was actually his older brother. But because of the relationship, Tommy Lasorda, the manager of the Dodgers, said, told the scouting department, hey, what about uh, Piazza? And they said, well, we, we don't like him. And we don't like him. And so Tommy kind of begged him and said, well, as a favor to me, after you draft everybody you like, would you draft Mike Piazza? So they did in the 62nd round. A round that no longer exists. That doesn't even, Segrist's round doesn't exist. They only go to 40 now, right? That's right, and it was 41 that Segrist was taken in. We hear about it all the time. Late rounds and organizations doing favors for people. It happens, it's commonplace. I remember Ron Schuler was a major league pitcher and he was general manager of the, of the White Sox. And his scouting department drafted his daughter. He was a softball player. You know, it used to be common that uh, players in the front office, you know, met ex players in the front office or even front office personnel, their kids would all get drafted. Fastball struck him out. That's eight tonight, five in a row in terms of strikeouts, and overall, 11 in a row tonight for Adam Wainwright. He's got him eating out of his hand right now. He's got everything working, and he also has that pinpoint control. Adam Wainwright knows the importance of this ball game and his role with this team. And he is pitching ace-like once again. Here's Cabrera, ninth start of the year for the Cincinnati catcher. Good curveball drops in for strike one. Talked about his dad being a legend, home run, legendary home run hitter in Venezuela. There was Hector Espino, was that type of player in Mexico. Espino was the all time home run hitter and all time hits leader. And I saw him late in his career. He still could mash. And I saw Deacon Jones with a two run lead, bases loaded, intentionally walked to Espino. Make it a one run game. There were two outs, and then the next hitter foiled his uh, plan by getting a double. He lost the game. He got fired as manager of the team, but they kept him on as the hitting coach. 
There's a high fly ball lifted into right. Handled easily by Stephen Piscotti. Adam Wainwright is locked in and so is Brandon Finnegan. Good ball game here tonight. 2 1 as we head to the sixth. Two one in favor of Cincinnati. Power stats brought to you by Kubota. And a look tonight at the power stats for number one overall picks. How about Alex Rodriguez? 694 home runs, made it to the big leagues as an 18-year-old, drafted by Seattle. Ken Griffey Jr. headed to the Hall of Fame this summer. Chipper Jones, 468 home runs for the switch hitter. Daryl Baines and Daryl Strawberry on that list. Three hundred and fifty dogs here tonight. Not pooches in the park like we have. It's some other vernacular for their dog night. Both these pitchers are dealing. Cardinals have been retired eleven in a row. And Wainwright has retired 12 straight Reds. Mentioned the numbers for Adam Wainwright at the plate. The Reds, their pitcher is hitting 070. 070. The Cardinals, 155, which is fifth best in the National League. Struck out his first time up, the 1 0. Wainwright. With a high fly ball into center field. Tyler Holt is under it for out number one. Well, today is a very important day in Cardinals history. It was June 9th, 1980. The first of Whitey Herzog's 822 wins as he took over as manager. Only Red Shane Deanst and Tony La Russa, the Hall of Famers, have more in Cardinals history. Tony, the all time. Winning his manager is Whitey took over for Ken Boyer, who was fired that season, started the year with the club. A couple of weeks ago, I said to Whitey, What are you most proud of? He said, Attendance. Yeah. I love the fact that in Kansas City, every year, and he said, I'm not talking about tickets sold. I mean, fannies in the seats. There were people in the seats. Every year it went up. And he really revitalized baseball in St. Louis in the 1980s. And Whitey had a number of chances to move on to different roles, whether it be GM, running a farm system, managing again for a lot of money. And he said he would never do it because he never could get a situation like he had with Gussie Bush. Not only with Gussie, but he had a likewise with Autry, Gene Autry, and with the Angels. And I was just talking with Whitey. Last week, and he brought up that story again that uh, had opportunities, but I was never going to have the control or have that relationship with ownership that I had. And to be quite frankly, if, if 
he and Ewing Kaufman would have gone along better in Kansas City. He'd still be managing in Kansas City. But Ewing Kaufman wanted to be Mr. Baseball, and as long as Whitey was there, nobody was going to take that throne. Let's see Carpenter shaking the right hand after that swing and a foul back. One of the players, it's rare that he wears no batting gloves, as we've talked about. Eric Fryer, another one on this team that does that. Tape on the fingers. Sometimes we get a blister, bone bruise. Three balls, one strike. His last eight games, he's been on a tear. Nine extra base hits. He scored 12 runs. His career, he came in with a 321 average against Cincinnati. Three for seven against Finnegan with two home runs. And he draws the walk. And he didn't have to swing the bat. He's happy about that. Coming off a victory over rival Costa Rica, the United States looks to continue their winning way, secure a spot in the knockout round when they square off against Paraguay. That's Saturday at 5, only on FS1, or watch it live on Fox Sports Go. And the jerseys of Cardinal Greats, Musial, Wainwright, Mike Shannon. Check on Carpenter. No stolen bases this year. He's still looking at his hands, and let's hope he's all right. You think you're going to get him out of there? No, sir. <laughs> Diaz is 0 for 2 and looks at a ball. Cardinals have their first base runner since back in the second inning. That was the only time they had any base runners on. One of the things I've been really impressed with with Diaz is his ability to launch a ball in the inside part of the plate, but so many times he just gets a piece of a ball and has 14 infield sink hits. Recently had a rule change to give him his 14th one. And he's got that great speed so. He did. Then he tops the ball or gets it in the infield you know it's, it's going to be a close play at first. So you make a mistake on the inner part he can launch it in the upper deck. The 1 1. Foul back at a good cut. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. I would save you once again, like I have many times. And after you coming off surgery, I definitely would save you. I don't want to see any, uh, any too much excitement up here. Well, we'd like to have a little excitement on the field, but you know, not up the here Red, for the Redbirds. But that—that's all we can stand right now, right? Absolutely. Two balls, two strikes. After the game tonight, we head to Pittsburgh. Big series coming up with the Pirates. Danny, so kind, carrying my bag. Jimmy carries my suitcase. Might milk this for a couple of years. I bet you will, knowing you. Fastball taken high. And a lot of great feedback from fans. I enjoyed all our discussion last night about. The journey of Aledmus Diaz here to St. Louis. I told you how much I enjoyed it. Quite the story. 3 2 instead of check on Carpenter. I was going to say that was awful close to a block. And it looks like it was our home plate umpire that called it, the crew chief. Ryan Price wants a interpretation of it. Ryan Price, the former pitching coach under Dusty Baker here in Cincinnati. Now watch. Looks like he steps towards their dugout. Well, I think what he also did it looked like the leg, the ankle came back and broke that plane. I was concentrating on Carpenter and I was waiting for him to say something. And Billy Miller just say something to first base umpire. And then I saw the crew chief. Jerry Meals walking out and called the balk. 3 2 pitch. Diaz base hit in the right center. Here comes Carpenter. 
He'll score, and Aledmus Diaz has tied this game at two. A costly balk charged against Finnegan, and the Cardinals make him pay. Well, first of all, the mistake was walking Carpenter, and then compounding it with the balk, and just like Moss, when he drove in Yachty back in the second inning, a very nice piece of hitting by Diaz. Going out, getting a pitch down, and just making contact. Look how he wristed that ball and everything, and made sure he made contact. Get it out there in the gap. You know, Carpenter's going to come around and score. Mark Riggins now out to talk to his young lefty, try to settle him down a little bit. A walk and a balk, and then all of a sudden, a good piece of hitting. Among the rookies currently in the National League, Diaz leads an average. He is fourth in home runs. He's third in RBIs. And he's first in runs. And he's second in hits. That's the kind of year he's put up so far. Then he's fourth in the National League with a 370 road batting average. After a pitcher is unnerved like this, do you think about running? Wouldn't be the worst thing here, no, huh? I mean, I mean, I think you got to get that good jump and everything. Very short lead by Diaz, who does have good speed, but only one stolen base this year. In order to be a good base dealer, it's a lot more than just speed. I think one of the biggest. You almost have to have a defiance that you defy people to get you out. Holiday on a 1 0 pitch. Out to right, and Matt tonight is 0 for 3. Right, Matt really struggling against left handers this year. 0 for 3, came in just batting 180. You expect him to crush it, and I think at some point somebody's going to pay for his frustration. Too good of a hitter to let this happen. Biscotti. Struck out back in inning number two, rounded out to third. Been a slow start here in June with one extra base hit, three RBI. It's now a 2 2 game. First pitch to Piscotti. Strike one. I know he's smart. But I think his baseball IQ is right up there with his intelligence. And still evolving as a young hitter, but really has a good idea what he wants to do and has a better ability to make corrections inside of the bat than most. And the 0 1. It's it foul and out of play. Biscotti selected along with Michael Walker that same draft class that we've talked about it before on this draft day around Major League Baseball. Compensatory pick. The loss of Albert Pujols. It's one to have those picks but it's something else to do what the Cardinals have done and draft well and develop. 0 2 pitch and a swing and a miss strikeout number seven. Finnegan at one point had set down 12 straight. Then a one out walk to Carpenter. Finnegan bought. Carpenter in scoring position. Next pitch, base hit. And with that, an RBI single. This game is tied at two.
chance to dress in style while supporting your favorite team on Sunday June 19th. 30,000 fans go home with a pair of baby blue Cardinals dress socks featuring the bird on the bat logo. Get your Father's Day tickets right now at Cardinals.com slash promotions. That was pitch number 66 from Adam Wainwright. Yeah, and Finnegan has got 96 pitches. Ground ball, fair ball. First out here in the bottom of the six, 13 in a row set down by Adam Wainwright. So what it tells you is that you're talking about pretty soon getting into that bullpen of the Cincinnati Reds. You're going to get into their bullpen and Wainwright still has plenty left in the tank. You're starting to see him go deeper and deeper into these ball games and that's why he's second among what active pitchers with 21 complete games only Kershaw has more at 24. No hits allowed since the first inning. Don't get paid for the complete games anymore. There are nine players that have 10 years currently of Major League Service with one team. And two of the nine are the battery tonight for the Cardinals Adam Wainwright, Yadier Molina. This day of free agency, it's almost unheard of even for the great players to stay with one team for an entire career. And in some ways you kind of are disappointed that Adam Wainwright was drafted by Atlanta and traded to the Cardinals because he's one that you think about him he's so here so long. Fly ball out to left holiday is there for our number two. Two of the greats in recent Cardinals history, Wainwright and Molina. I'm sure Adam has learned a ton from Yachty, and Yachty's learned a ton, a ton from pitchers like Adam Wainwright. I asked Adam in spring training, give me an example of the greatness of Yachty or Molina. We talk about it all the time, and you see it with throws to second and the various things he does defensively as Votto is hit by that pitch. And he said, All you have to do is go back to the postseason of 2006 and how Yadier Molina guided some of the young pitchers like myself through that postseason. He said he was incredible. That catches Votto on the arm. Two outs, something that doesn't happen often, but you know, you got a dangerous hitter up there, you're in a tie ball game, and if you're going to miss, you miss inside. So the streak ends at 14 straight, set down by Molina. Here's Phillips, or excuse me, by Wainwright, and here is Phillips who doubled into the right field corner and scored. That one catches Molina. How tough is young and a Molson at the ready but just part of the nightly experience isn't it. People ask us all the time what is it about Molina. It's that it's durability. He's there every single night. I mean it's a luxury for Mike Matheny to know that he can you know just pencil in Molina every day. Of course Mike was that same back player himself. You could get him out of a game. Now I think if you're honest with the situation you'd say is he playing too much. That may change with Brian Pena when he's activated. You know. I, I, that's inevitable he signed a two year contract. But Eric Fryer's done an outstanding job. And the loneliest job in baseball is the backup catcher to Yadier Molina. But I think Eric Fryer has opened up some eyes and he's. Made his presence known, and I think he'll, he's going to have some jobs for him at the big league level too. Going to the count with two outs on Brandon Phillips.
curve ball and he just got a piece. Recently John Mozalak was asked about the future of Yadier Molina meaning what happens to Molina once he retires and he said he'll always have a job with the yeah. Cardinals if he wants to coach. If he wants to instruct we don't know about managing and as he said a lot of players initially want to get away from the game for the first couple of years. I mean there was a time where you know, some great players that were pitchers I'm thinking of that wanted to almost be in a platoon situation in coaching at the minor leagues you know because they they want to spend time with their family they wanted to do this they want to do that you got to remember every time every year you're set out there's a whole new crop of retirees nice pick by Molina a lot of it depends on what's the level of involvement for the player could be just coming to spring training working with younger players or even the current catcher of that time do you get in uniform at some level even in the major leagues do you think about managing I think that's what you know they kind of get start with that and then they kind of get hooked the 2 2 curveball and struck him out nine tonight for Adam Wainwright and he is cruising we head to the seventh in a 2 2 game. Now enter the seventh inning the Cardinals Major League Baseball not just the National League first in runs average on base percentage and slugging percentage much of that due to the fact that their pinch hitters have been some of the best in all of baseball a little history between these two guys remember a couple of years ago before we had that brawl Phillips said some disparaging things against the Cardinals and then he tried to tap Yadier Molina's in the back after this but here's the strikeout we just saw look at Yachty here didn't want to rub it in didn't want to do anything just kind of tabbed him and you could tell a lot of that uh, frustration and that anger is subsided between these two clubs may still be with Cueto but not so much with Phillips Phillips has told me he considers St. Louis the best baseball city in America well, I always said that you know when the Cardinal fans boo him if you really wanted to hurt him you plot him you know, and, he go, and make him think about it. why are you doing that? <laughs> this is our gateway Honda home run inning. Cardinals hit a home run, $1,000 donated to the Make a Wish Foundation. Well, the Reds have had a couple of tremendous trades for second baseman. One currently right here with Brandon Phillips. And the other you think about is Lee May for Joe Morgan. Lee May had put up big, big numbers. And Joe Morgan was a smallish type player. Not a lot of people knew what he meant. 
to a team when you surrounded him with great players. That was it. Just what he could do. And it wasn't looked upon as much as it is now. There's a base hit for Molina, but on base percentage. And Joe Morgan had a great on base percentage and was a key player for the great uh, big red machine. Joe Morgan was a, you know, a nice player for, you know, Houston. And then when they made that trade and you surround him with, you know, Bench, Concepcion, and Perez, and, you know, George Foster, Griffey Sr., Dreesen, you surround him, and all of a sudden, this very good player became a Hall of Famer. Mentioned earlier, back to back MVPs, Big Red Machine. That was in 75 and 76. And for our younger fans that are really into Saber metrics, to give you an idea, his war in a five year stretch wins above replacement. It's one of the greatest, it's top three years in franchise history for Joe Morgan. Oh, one pitch as Moss showed a bunt. A left hand hitter that could, he could smoke the ball out of a ballpark. Had that his left elbow, he just flap it, you know, part of his trigger mechanism, getting ready. Very, very good ball player. And, you know, he, and he did have that good batting eye, so he'd take a lot of walks with his great hitting. Moss dropping down a bunt. Finnegan gloves throws. It is not in time. Brandon Moss of all people. Two bombs last night and now an infield hit. Well why not do it against the shift. Not hey you're right now you're trying to get into the bullpen you get nobody out you get a man in scoring position and if you get it down you should be safe. Finnegan gets to this ball, but he kind of double clutched, took that little extra time, and that allowed Moss digging hard to get safe at first base. Blake Wood, a right handed pitcher, is getting loose in the pen for Cincinnati. Here's Jerko, two runners on. First pitch is strike. Jed back in the second inning with a runner at second base, fly to right. And was called out on strikes back in inning number five as you get a look at Wood throwing in the pin. Pitch count at 104 for the lefty of the Cincinnati Reds. And the 0 1. One ball, one strike. Randall Gritchick on deck. This is where it becomes a tough decision potentially for the manager. If you get to Wainwright's spot and a chance to do some damage, do you go to your bench, even though he is cruising right now in this game? Well, what helps make that decision is you got a good hitting pitcher. You know, Wainwright and not only home runs, but extra base hits, and he's got eight RBIs on the year, so it's leading pitchers in many categories. I think you got to do is you got to get Jerko and, and Gritchick got to come through for you and make that decision a lot easier. But just in case, you got O up. One ball and two strikes. Reds will have Bruce, Duvall, and Suarez coming up. On the bench tonight, Hazel Baker, Garcia, and Adams from the left side, Fryer and Peralta from the right side. Here's a 1 2. We'll do it again. And on the flip side, talking about managing, if you're Brian Price, even though he may be running out of gas at 108 pitches, this is still probably your best option in Finnegan with the way that their bullpen's been rolling. Yeah, it's uh, one of those unfortunate things, you know. Starters want to go deep into a game because they feel that's the only chance to win. On one and two, Jerko lines it to short off the glove of Cozart. Force play though at third. Nothing Molina could do there. No. He had to hold up. 
not knowing if that ball would carry to Cozart where he could catch it. Cozart, such a slick fielder. Cardinals have to be thankful that they don't, they don't turn two with it. So Yachty right there. Now he misses. He's got to go, but with his speed, he's dead out. Got the out in front of him. Finnegan at 109. A 2 2 game. One out, runners at first and second. Gritchick has lined out to Phillips, a screamer back in the fifth and grounded out. And a high fly ball. Out to left field. Catch is made by Duvall. Runners stay put. And it's decision time for Mike Matheny. There's your answer. It'll be Johnny Peralta. Chevy Fox tracks and Gritchick. Pitch low and away. Flies out to left. Breaking ball. Got it off the end of the bat. So Peralta will get a shot. He has made his presence known in the first two games of this series, coming off the DL. Four for nine, a home run, and already five RBIs. And the way the Cardinals could use Peralta here is pinch hit, stays in the game, and then replace Jerko defensively. Put your pitcher in the seventh spot. First pitch to Peralta. Out to center. And the catch is made by Tyler Holt. Cardinals strand two. Sung Wan O oh struck out the side earlier in this series. Coming on in a 2 2 game. Tickets fill up at Phillips 66 with eight gallons or more now until September 29th. Receive up to 50% off on a pair of tickets to a Cardinals home game. For more information, visit cardinals.com slash Phillips 66. What a shame that could keep Wainwright in this ball game or at least reward him with a victory. He only allowed two hits and they both came in the first inning. O will take over here and what a pitcher he's been for the Cardinals. He leads. He's tied for the National League lead with 45 strikeouts, third in appearance. This is 31st, fifth in relief pitching inning, sixth in ERA. And mentioned last night he struck out the side. He's done that five different times this year. You'll get Jay Bruce. First pitch hit in the air and out of play. He faced Duvall, Suarez, and Billy Hamilton last night. In striking out the side in the seventh inning. Here's the 0 1. In my mind, Al, if this one counts, we're talking about the All Star game. 
and home field advantage for the World Series. Guys like O and setup men need to be considered for the All Star game. Sometimes they're more important than closers because they're they're in their normal role of pitching, you know, setup innings. So I think it is one of the few changes that they've done where you know you reward guys. One two pitch. And to be quite honest, Danny, a lot of times the game is won and lost in those seventh sure. and innings, and not so much in the ninth. Well, right here, you've got their leading RBI man on deck, their top home run man. The 2 2. High fly ball. Out to right, backing up is Scotty with room. And Bruce is the first out here in inning number seven. Wainwright walked the second man that he saw, then Phillips a double, Bruce a ground out for an RBI, then Duvall an RBI base hit, and that was it in the first inning off of Adam Wainwright. Six innings, nine strikeouts. Tired 14 in a row, and then he hit bottle. Only base runner since the first inning, and then he retired the next two. So vintage Adam Wainwright. Remember last time out, he had a tough luck loss, only allowing two runs and seven innings. Good pitch. One ball, one strike. It's a little toe tap. It's a short arm. It's coming out of the ear, if you will, of Sun Wano. Hides the ball. Jumps on you, it's sneaky fast, and then he's got that very good breaking ball that he can pinpoint it away. It's not just the draft, but finding these types of players. Diaz, O, Matt Slater, who's been with the Cardinals for a number of years, did that. You know, it's, and you got to get into those markets. And then now that the Cardinals have established that worldwide in Asia and in Cuba, it'll be easier to find the next ones. On the outside corner and a strikeout. And tonight, in a lot of ways, a celebration of all the hard work of the scouts that scour the country looking for young talent. They put in so many hours and so many miles into finding the next Sung Wan O or the next Matt Carpenter, Matt Adams, whoever it may be. And the scouts really have changed over the years. There used to be some of the old crusty ball players that beat down the bushes for those and now you know you talk about analytics you talk about all this you talk about scout school There's still something about a former player having that instinct to kind of know the heart and the mind of the player here's a one 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 ball two strikes and that's one of the, the battles that's going to be raging on here the next couple of nights in all the different war rooms and the draft rooms. The battle of analytics as opposed to the old school scout that looks at a player and knows that in his mind that player can make it to the big leagues. So then it goes to Randy Flores and some of his top lieutenants to make that decision. Yeah. The characters of the game, the old time scouts, Ellis Clary, Eddie Lyons. Just unbelievable stories that some of these guys could tell and you know, just their lives. On two and two. Round ball that's hit to third. Jed Jerko across the diamond. Coming up for the Cardinals. The top of the lineup. Carpenter, Diaz, and that man there, Matt Holliday. It's 2-2.
opening loose 2-2 game. Bartolo Colon, by the way, making that start for the Mets. He's allowed three or fewer earned runs in 10 of his 11 starts this year. He just keeps getting people out. Yeah. Ross Ollendorf released by the Royals during spring training. Three days later signed by the Reds. He recorded his only professional save last uh, May for Texas against the Yankees. And he has a save with the Reds this year. But trying to find anybody that can get people out. How about the old fashioned windup. Don't see this very often. First pitch to Carpenter and a strike at 94. It's been with the Yankees, the Pirates, Padres, Nationals, Rangers. That pitch was called a ball, by the way. Looked to be right down the middle. It did. I like the call. Oldendorf attended Princeton University, majored in operations research and financial engineering. Played baseball for the Princeton Tigers. And he completed his degrees when he was with the Arizona Diamondbacks back in 2006. Talking about completing your degrees, we're talking about key cap. Dean Keefer completed his degree at University of Louisville, and we knew that he played with Duvall, the Reds' uh, left fielder. But Dean was telling me today he played with Duvall since he was nine years of age. And Chris Walsh, Welsh, one of the broadcasters for the Reds, Carpenter drives it out to deep right field. That's trouble. Hops off the wall. On his way to second base with his 20th double of the year. Came in second in that category in the National League. Uh, he's just a doubles machine. Remember a couple of years ago, he beat Stan Mutual's record with 55 doubles by a left handed batter. Last year, he led with 44 in the National League. Just hooks this ball, and here come the Cardinals. We're in the bullpen. I was going to say real quick that. Chris Welsh has a son that's a pitcher at Louisville. And Dean mentioned, he goes, he goes, what's his name? And he goes, Mac. And he goes, I knew Mac. I was a, I was a pitching coach. That, you know, I helped out and everything. And I saw him when he was a freshman. Chris was saying his son, unfortunately, is right handed, but throws as hard as Chris did at 85. Right. <laughs> Diaz gets the bunt down, barehanded by Votto, throw to third, save. And again, it's one of those plays that may be contested by Cincinnati with a remarkable slide for the second time in this series by Matt Carpenter. You may recall it was on two nights ago, Tuesday night, Carpenter tried to stretch a double into a triple. And he won a have this checked out so the headsets will come out. Well, that's another thing about Votto a very good gold glove winning first baseman and he has that ability to throw and a lot of confidence in his throwing. Well, if you're Brian Price you have nothing to lose here. Right. Remember we thought they're going to challenge in the first inning. But he had a lot of game left and it wasn't uh, overruled. I think he, he missed the tag. Even if he did have the tag, I think he was in there. Yeah, but watch the glove goes down and like it bounces. The and tag he, is there, it's yeah. just the hand is in early. Yeah. And then Carpenter heads up to drag the left leg and foot to the bag. And one of the things infielders now, they really want to hold that tag on in case the guy does come off the bag. Quick decision, safe. So the sacrifice by Diaz and what an opportunity here for the Cardinals the heart of their lineup coming up. And here is. Holiday and here's the play that we were just referring to Tuesday night. 
This double tied it up at six and then Carpenter. His hand was on the foot. That was the explanation that the Cardinals got. Watch the left foot and then in this play sliding under the tag. So 2 2 is our score top of the eighth. And a chance here for Holiday inside for ball one. And on a night that we have the Major League Baseball draft, Oldendorf, his senior thesis was sabermetrics to demonstrate the return on investment from the Major League Baseball draft. Right now, he doesn't care about that. He's trying to figure out how to get Holiday out. Put these guys, he and Bowman together with their theses. And you got, maybe you got two pretty good guys that have futures in the front office. Holiday is 0 for 1 against Ollendorf, a strikeout. Two balls, one strike. May have chased the ball. Matt tonight struck out swinging in the first fly to left and also fly to right. Diaz your runner at first base Carpenter at third and nobody out. Piscotti who's hitting 519 with runners in scoring position waits on deck. A lot of mistakes late in the game trying to pitch a dangerous hitter in. The bullpen of the Reds collectively this year 10 and 15 and the ERA is just a shade below seven. Brian Price saw his bullpen get a lot better in the first six weeks, but the last two nights against the Cardinals, they've gone back to when they were really, really bad. And he draws a walk, and the bases are loaded. Ollendorf walks his seventh of the year. Ennick started with a double by Carpenter on a two strike pitch Diaz the sacrifice and then Holiday drawing the walk and the base is loaded for Steven Piscotti infield is drawn in. Nobody out. Cardinals have selected by the way just moments ago Delvin Perez a shortstop hope to tell you more about him before the night is through certainly the postgame show will have it for you it's 23rd overall 0 1 pitch now 0 and 2. Those numbers with runners in scoring position, 519. You may think you get ahead in Piscotti, but he's able to make adjustments. No balls, two strikes. Outfield is deep. They are straight away. Ollendorf steps off the pitching rubber. His career with the bases loaded. Bounced and kept in front by Cabrera. You always think about home runs when you come to this ballpark as you get a look at the Plaza Tire Service replay. Great American ballpark has yielded 107 home runs, most in baseball, and a difference of 19 from the next ballpark, which is Camden Yards and Chase Field. They've seen 88 home runs. Had four home runs last night. Remember, it's Bush Stadium. We hit six against the Reds pitchers. Foul back in a good cut. <laughs> and 
outfield in, the outfield deep. A lot of hits. Seen Piscotti chasing that breaking ball on the outside portion of the plate. It's a fastball up and in, almost hit him at 95. Evens it up at two balls and two strikes. Surprised how many times they're going in. Go in, you don't have that pinpoint control, you make a mistake, and you can launch one. Foul back. Good cut. When a hitter fouls a ball right over the shoulder of a catcher, he's right on the velocity. You better change something. Take a little off or add a little bit more. Base is loaded. Now time is called. The game on the line right here. Molina on deck just studying Ollendorf. And now again, time called, and Cabrera wants to make sure they're on the same page. He talked about those home runs, four more for the Cardinals last night. Sixth time already they've had four. Were more home runs in a game this year. We're only in early June. Is it 80 on the year? 80 on the year. One of the Redbirds of the 80s. Whitey sometimes said. The 2-2. Two -two. Ground ball that's hit to short. Cozart to the plate. Out there to first. No. Throw behind the runner. Safe. Heads up play by Cabrera and Diaz just back in safely at third. It brings in Molina. Hit that ball a couple feet left or right of Cozart and the Cardinals will be happy. But right at him, he's an outstanding fielder. You really got to respect Cabrera right there, the fake to first, and try to get Diaz around in the bag. Of concern for the Cardinals would be Molina and the double play. He's grounded into 11 this year, tied for the most with DJ LeMahieu of the Rockies. And because of that, the middle infielder back at double play depth, third base in. I think Votto will come in a little bit more, but Yachty is two for five off of Olandor. First pitch to Molina. Strike one. Molina tonight doubled off the wall in right, scored. Cardinals first run back in the second, struck out swinging in the fourth, and a base hit to center in the seventh. One pitch. Strike two. Remember Ollendorf throwing this hard. 96 with a fast with a four seamer. Throw a two seamer around 88. One ball, two strikes, bases loaded. And there's Ollendorf is still trying to get on the same page with his catcher Cabrera. Sometimes 
sometimes just hard to see the, the signs. And again, time is called. Even the home fans a little restless with this. Catcher putting down a suggestion, but you get in a tough spot like this. You want that catcher to put down a, a sign, and that's exactly the same thing you've been thinking about. And then you got the confidence to throw that pitch. When you can't get together on it, then you kind of start somebody's doubting the selection, and you may not throw it with the same intent. Votto now cheating in at first. He's on the grass. Molina fly ball will it drop it will one run will score and the Cardinals have the lead Yadier Molina on a one two pitch to drive in Diaz and it's three to two St. Louis third hit of the night for Yadi and it's the biggest hit of the night for him we got the Cardinals started back in the second inning when he hit a double off the right field wall and now he gives them a three two lead and Pile on. Down and in, just kind of makes a nice, easy swing. And Moss. here is Brandon Moss. The one lefty that they have is Singrani. And Singrani pitched an awful lot last night, being used as their closer with Ollendorf. And what a chance here. The infield is in. Moss swings through the first pitch for strike one. Moss one for three against Ollendorf. It's a double. Hazel Baker, the pinch runner for Holiday. Biscotti at second base. And Molina is at first. Strike two. Hazel Baker lives about two hours from here up in Indiana. Saw his parents before the game. Do something. Make mom and dad proud of And the 0 2 pitch to Moss popped up. Infield fly rule called. Called a little late, too. The infield in, Cozart had to go back and makes the catch on the outfield grass. And the Cardinals will send Jed Jerko to the plate. The Cardinals only score one run in this spot. Oldendorf walks away disappointed, clearly giving up a run, but it could have been much worse. Exactly right. And you get the bases loaded like that and nobody out. You almost have to assume they're going to score one. You'd hopefully they don't, but don't let it be a crooked number. First pitch to Jerko. Ball one. He came up with runners at first and second back in the seventh inning and lined out just a rocket. He's fly to right and he also struck out. Here's a 1 0 pitch. One ball one strike. Hazel Baker, Piscotti, Molina all aboard. The 1 1. That's tapped foul. One ball, two strikes. Here's a one two. Ollendorf strikes out Jerko. Cardinals strand the bases loaded, but they pick up the lead. With two strikes, Molina went down to get it. A single into center. 
third hit of the night to drive in a lead Miss Diaz. We head to the bottom of the eighth. 3 2, St. Louis. Fox Sports Midwest is brought to you by Bud Light. Raise one, two right now. And by your local Volkswagen dealer. Cardinals have the lead. It's now 3-2 here in Cincinnati. Cardinals have allowed just two hits combined with Wainwright and O. As Kevin Segris takes over, Jeremy Hazelbaker stays in the game to take over in left field. Greg Garcia is at second base. That makes you wonder about the hand of Matt Carpenter. Also maybe explains why you wouldn't pinch hit with Garcia in that spot with Jed Jerko. Potentially. Regardless here we go. Here's Tyler Holt. First pitch is strike. Last time we saw Segrist. It was a home run by Votto in the bottom of the ninth and a game winner in game one. Fell behind Avato 2 and 0, and then ball up out over the middle of the plate and made him pay. Garcia under his glove, couldn't come up with it. Tying run is aboard, and that's Tyler Holt. Just the third hit tonight for Cincinnati. He had struck out in his previous two plate appearances. Stopped the glove, he slowed it up a little bit. Wainwright six innings tonight struck out nine. Oh, they won two three seventh with a strikeout. And now Segrist. Jabrera. 0 for two tonight. Popped up strike one. A switch hitter. Well, you may be wondering about Billy Hamilton. Why is he not in this game? We talked about his numbers against Wainwright. He's also going through the concussion protocol. And remember last night, there was a tag to his face and his head trying to steal third in last night's game that was in the bottom of the fifth inning. He was shook up in that play and so he's under the uh, concussion protocol of Major League Baseball. Wish him well but glad he's not available. <laughs> Here's an 0 1 pitch. 
Instead of check on the runner at first base. And I'm not sure would he be available or not or. He has to go through a battery of tests. That's bunted foul. What I kind of question there is with all the other ways you could replace a guy and like paternity leave and different things you would think if somebody was on a protocol you could replace that spot on the roster. So what happens is there is that seven day disabled list that we've talked about before. They have a, a committee of experts and local doctors that will look at the particular player. They've created this policy and they oversee the manner in which the concussions are finally diagnosed and when that player can return to the field so we don't know what he's gone through at this point. Yeah. Mike Matheny has been instrumental in some of that coming up with that protocol. And the club has to submit a quote unquote return to play form to Major League Baseball. So they're obviously trying to take care of the players. 0 2 pitch. Fastball and a strikeout. And Cabrera couldn't get the bunt down, and that's a big out for Kevin Segrist. The Reds have struck out 11 times tonight. Well, Segrist has had no problem with right handed batters. Ball up and in, throws it hard enough where he tie up a lot of hitters, but Segrist prior to this year had trouble with left handed batters. De Jesus Jr., who's See 222 on the on the season, but he's been swinging a very hot bat. He's got a six-game hitting streak, tying his career high. He's seven for 18 during that time. Just to put in perspective, what the Cardinals pinch hitters have done with 10 home runs, there are four teams that have no home runs from their pinch hitters. That includes the Cincinnati Reds, is one of the four. His bat into shallow right. Biscotti comes up with an amazing catch. Oh my goodness. One of the best plays of the year. Steven Piscotti fully extended, diving into the infield area, and with that catch, he takes a hit away. And you're trying to protect a one run lead, so it's all the more important to come up with that ball and not let it get by you. And as you said, one of the best plays we've seen. He plays, and Riggleman got the affirmative that it, yes, he catches it, he doesn't trap it. But he'll lay out, and a very nifty play right there. Holds the runner first. Oh, they're going to check it. They're going to check and make sure and see if he didn't trap it. And if that's the case, the runner would get second base. What do you think catch. I don't know you know I mean it, when I first saw it I, I thought there was a legitimate reason to check it and also I was watching Diaz at a shortstop telling get the throw into second like if he did trap it get the force out but because of the initial call they'll they can reset the runner if, if they deem it was not a catch. If the call is overturn then you would see Mike Matheny say well wait a minute we would add a chance to get the runner at second base exactly but the Reds counter and say look at you called it an out so my runner has got to go back to first very tough to tell by the way, this is a crew chief review, not a challenge by the Reds. A 
Is that because it's past the seventh inning? And it's kind of funny how some of these work out where you'll see managers all the time say hey look our guys got to look at it in our video room you need to take a look at it and at that point it's up to the umpire as to whether or not he will make the decision to take a look at it or you just don't know if they're get another angle you know in New York to look at but it may be tough to overturn this I could see it going either way. Showing it on the video board, it's tough to tell too here at yeah. the ballpark. Can't really see if the glove gets underneath the, the ball. Decision. Safe. Mm. And here comes Mike Matheny. Exactly the scenario we thought that would unfold, it has. Yeah, because Mike's saying, hey, we would have thrown him out. He had no chance. He's less than halfway. But Jerry Meals is going, yeah, but we called it out, so he gets the base automatically. This is something you don't see very often anymore. The argument which has been eliminated in this game because of replay. One of the things I miss the most. Some of the classic umpire manager arguments. Earl Weaver's turned over his grave. <laughs> the thing about it too is the Scotty came up and threw that ball to second just like we said trying to get get, get the force out if you think about it again you know he trapped the ball and then just throw out throw the guy out at second base but you see how he gets the ball back out there Diaz was yelling the runner's stranded he doesn't know what's going to go he sees the umpire call him out, so he goes back to first. Here's Zach Cozart. He was two for four last night, hit a home run, his ninth of the season. Had a couple of RBIs. And he takes a fastball for his strike. He's 0 for 3 tonight. He struck out swinging against Adam Wainwright back in the first. He's flied to center and also flied to left. Runners at first and second. And Cozart is one of those guys that can really get down the line. Runs well. Have to be a hard hit ball to double him up. Do have a strikeout pitcher on the mound. He's ahead in the count, 0 and 2. And Cozart pops it up. Infield fly. And the catch made by Greg Garcia. Big, big out. And now, here we go again. Game on the line, and here's Joey Votto. I remember Joey Votto. Now, after they hit the home run to beat the Cardinals on Tuesday night, is still an 091 hitter. One for 11. Does have four walks and six strikeouts against Segrist. First pitch. Strike one. Votto 
is now tied with Eric Davis after that home run with 203 in his Reds career. That's ninth best. Up next, Ken Griffey Jr. at 210. And the all-time leader in Reds history, Johnny Bench, 389. Using that curveball more against lefties. Would he do it here against Votto? Votto hits it sharply to Diaz and a force play. Garcia to the bag at second. Segrist out of the jam. We head to the ninth. 3 2, St. Louis. Wrap up day one of the draft. Cardinals selected a shortstop from Puerto Rico with their first pick. And they've got a couple of more coming up before the night is through. Tony Singrani is our Chevy Cole to the pen. And uh, nothing fancy here. Fastball slider with the Hyundai pitch arsenal. You know, Al, we were talking about Johnny Bench, and anytime I think about Johnny Bench, I just think about Ted Simmons grew up watching him. You played with him. And should Ted be in the Hall of Fame. You know at the time of his retirement Simmons had four hundred and eighty three doubles. That was the most hit by any catcher in the hall. Also held the National League record for home runs by a switch hitter. This is at the time of his retirement. His two eighty five lifetime batting average eighteen points higher. The Johnny Benches. Oh, he was a better hitter than Johnny Bench. Bench was a home run hitter. And he played the big red machine. And he was, you know, a great, great defensive catcher. And, you know, Ted was criticized at times for pass balls and different things. But I can tell you, if I was pitching and the game was on the line, I wanted Ted Simmons catching. You know, he had a way to. Motivate me and also because of his bat, he's going to win the game for us. But in my mind, Teddy is a Hall of Famer. Uh, but I've said it a thousand times that, and I don't mean this to be disrespectful to Johnny Bench, but Ted Simmons was a better hitter than Johnny Bench. Johnny had the home runs and he had the great defensive ability. Here's Greg Garcia, two pitches for Singrani and two outs. Think about the the heat of the turf at Bush Stadium too. And durability with Ted Simmons. He played in at least 150 games for seven consecutive seasons. Think about He's that. He's a switch hitter. Right. And I mean, I knew there were times where he was just on fumes, and he would 
I remember one game we were playing against the, the Atlanta Braves and their pitching staff wasn't very good. And you knew he, Teddy was just going to own that pitching staff. But he was so tired that he was dropping his arms because he just couldn't hold the bat up. And yet you look at that year 1975 he hit 332. It was 333 one side 332 these other side. And at 75 he caught 154 games. And that, that was the single season record. At that time. As Adams is the pinch hitter. I mean just amazing to think of some of the numbers that he put up. Clutch hitter. I mean, he was a pure hitter in the 70s as there was in the National League. And I'm going to bring up war again for our young fans. Wins above replacement. In terms of first round picks for the Cardinals in the history of the franchise, his is at the top. The 2 1 pitch. And Whitey Herzog made a statement, you know, when he traded him to. Milwaukee you know, is a trade that benefited both clubs. They met in the, in the World Series in 1982. But he said if there was a DH in the National League, Ted Simmons would still be still be playing. The 2-2. Two -two. Adams base hit left field. How about Matt? Simmons batted 306 times reached 20 home runs five times as a Cardinal and he told me on our broadcast last year when he was inducted into the Cardinals Hall of Fame from the left side of the plate he learned about the positioning of his hands from Matty Alou and Joe Torrey how to fight off pitches from the right side of the plate and he hit in front of Torrey for much as many remember of the 1973 season. How about uh, did you see Diaz here, but Matt Adams as a pinch hitter, that was his eighth pinch hit. He's first in pinch hit at bats. He's now eight for 14 with two home runs as a pinch hitter. Strike to Diaz. He got a key bunt down back in the eighth inning. Votto tried to get the lead man, which was Carpenter, racing from second to third. He was safe on a heads up slide. Carpenter eventually was forced out at the plate with the bases loaded and Diaz scored what has been the go ahead run. Forty first run he has scored this year and think about how much of his season has been down in the order too. Eighth place for a long time. It was forty one runs. Fifth best in the National League. The 2 1 instead of check on the runner at first, Adams, who's going nowhere. That was Adams extended his hitting streak to nine games, and he adds to his 385 average against left handed pitching with his pinch hit. And a 2 1 pitch. So 20 straight games that Adams has reached base. Career high. Hazel Baker on deck. And a chance here for Diaz. 3 1. A lead miss with a high fly ball. Out to left. That'll stay in the ballpark as the catch is made on the track. We head to the bottom of the ninth. Trevor Rosenthal time. Cardinals up by a run and looking to take two of three.
broadcast is presented by the authority of the Cardinals. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals. So here we go. Bottom of the ninth. Cardinals with a lead of three to two. And Trevor Rosenthal will try to close it out. He had a rough Friday night against San Francisco and then two very good back to back games against the Giants on Saturday and Sunday. And he has a pitch since Sunday so well rested. Nice little tune up for showdown in the National League Central for second place. Pirates were beaten in that game against Colorado 11 to 5. The leader in saves is Familia, along with Gomez and Melanson of the Pirates. All three have 19. The Cardinals can hold on and win tonight. They would be tied with the Pirates going into play tomorrow. First pitch was a ball to Brandon Phillips. At times that has been a strike tonight. Two bowls no strikes. Phillips has struck out twice and also doubled into the corner and right and scored a run back in inning number one. And he's had his problems against Trevor. Two for ten. And five strikeouts. Want to make sure he doesn't get back into that walk mode. 19 innings, 16 walks, but most of the time that's been a non safe situation. Three and one. And knowing that, you may see the Reds in this particular case take one more strike. Or at least be disciplined to swing at a pitch that's, you know, that's in your wheelhouse, something you could drive. Three one is just foul. That was not a fair ball right over the first base back. And right by the first base coach of the Cincinnati Reds. Broken bat and again. Freddie Benavides is the first base coach. Billy Hatcher on the other side, third base coach. Billy was part of the last championship team here with the Cincinnati Reds. You may recall 1990 in a team that went wire to wire. Billy, really longtime first base coach for the Reds, and this year they moved Riggleman from third base to the bench coach. And some people believe he's the heir apparent to Brian Price. Not fair to have Brian, you know, with a team like this, the pitching staff like this. How do you judge your manager? And and then there's some that believe Barry Larkin is waiting in the wings. Take over the helm. Here's a 3 2 pitch. Well, you think when you make the statement wire to wire, it's a dominant team. And in 1990, the Reds were anything but. They got off to a great start and then were under 500 for the rest of the season. They had the Nasty Boys, Norm Charlton, and Randy Myers, Rob Dibble. Taking on the big bad Tony La Russa led A's, and it was a home run off of Dave Stewart in game one. And Tony La Russa told me, uh oh. And he knew the Reds were ready to play. Jose Rio was the MVP, you may recall. And Eric Davis had a lacerated kidney. Marge Schott would not fly him back on a private plane, and it really upset a yeah, lot of the players. It really did. And of course, Marge Schott, the owner of the Reds, was also mad. Because they won it in four straight games. You know, the first four games go to the players' share. After that, it's you know split with ownership. And she was mad because it helped the players. 3-2 is a ground ball that's hit to third. Glove by Jerko. One out. So Rosenthal comes back from being down 3-0 to get a tough out in Brandon Phillips. Now 
two for 11. That's the same average. Two for 11 is Jay Bruce against Rosenthal. Trevor trying to pick up save number 11 here tonight. The tough customer at the plate in Jay Bruce. That's the ability to tie it one swing. Two. Now expand the zone and have him widen the plate and get himself out. After starting out 3 0 on Phillips, it's been eight straight strikes for Rosenthal. The 0 2 pitch and a ground ball hit to Garcia. Two outs. Adam Wainwright is our Budweiser player of the game at one point set down 14 straight six innings nine strikeouts. First time that he struck out nine or more in a game since back in 2014. Once again Cincinnati tied his career high with 12. Duvall is 0 for 1 against Rosie with a strikeout but we know with his 17 home runs you got to pitch him carefully. First pitch to him. Popped up and this should do it. Garcia going out and he's got it. And the Cardinals take two of three. The save for Rosenthal. Three to our final. I thought this was a must win for the Cardinals and it took a little effort, but Wainwright was sensational. We could build off of that and hopefully he can, the rest of the starters can learn something and we can have a little fun in Pittsburgh starting tomorrow night. So the Pirates and the Cardinals tied now in the Central Division and Big weekend matchup at PNC Park beginning tomorrow night. Cardinals hold on 3-2. Lots to go with the postgame show coming your way next.